Okay, so number four. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And she was on the table before. Yeah, that was kind of hard. Yeah. 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 So, uh. Okay, so. Wait. Oh, okay. So, number four. Cheesy crackers. What's the average rate of change of the function f on 1 to 4? Okay. So you pick C. Why'd you pick C? I don't remember how it works. I, I picked uh, What What do you pick? 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 I don't know what that problem is. Let's see, so I got four here. I think they're all the way up. Here's the following table. Can we stop talking while Aaron's talking? Sorry. Let's see if I have an average rate of change of the function f on 1 to 4. Here. Okay, so what is the average rate of change of the function on 1 to 4? Is it 1 to 4? Yeah, it's 1 to 4. So that seems like it um, sense. is reasonable because you would just, to find an average, you typically add up all the numbers and divide by the number of numbers that you have. Correct. But if you want the average rate of change, mm. then, ah, okay. <laughs> then the average rate of change is always the end amount, so your average speed is your end distance minus your beginning distance divided by the time, distance over time. Oh, I can remember right now. Change in y over change in x, average. It seems reasonable to say well, the average would just be add up all the speeds and then divide by the, or the speed, it doesn't even say, the, the rates of change, and then divide that by four. And so again, what I did, uh, let's see, I took, let's see, I just kind of took, I just like took all the plots, I just kind of found that I just slope individually of each one, so I like 3 minus 2 over 2 minus 1, 3 over 4 minus 2. I went for, yeah, I took the slopes between 1 to 2, 2 to 3, and 3 to 4. Uh -huh. so, I was, so I did like a slope tool, y2 minus y1, so I went 3 minus 2 over 2 minus 1 plus 4 minus 3 over 3 over 2 plus uh, 6 minus 4 over 4 over 3, which gave me 1 plus 1 plus 2. Two, which equals five, and that's that is the three total. So that was three. Whoa, I did not know. That's hard to know. Okay, I'm going to write down the right answer. No. I don't know if that was probably the right way or not. So you add them all up and divide it by. I think kind of same thing they did. You found the slopes. Yeah. One. Between one and two, two to three, and three to uh, four. And then divide that by three. Yep. I think about that for a second. But in general, average rate of change or average speed or average velocity even, you would just take, say I started at 20 miles away from something and then I wound up 50 miles from that same reference point, uh, I don't know, half an hour later. Well, I'll just take 50 minus 20, you got 30, over a half an hour, right? 0.5 hours. So I'm traveling at an average of 60 miles an hour, right? So that's what we're going to do here. We're just going to take the end distance, or distance 6, minus 2 over 4 minus 1. Basically just take it to be a straight tangent line from point A to point B. And what is the slope of that line? 4 thirds. And that could be tough when that's the see that's the average rate of change. You might be confusing it with the average value. So that can be confusing because they're giving you rates of change values. Values of the rates of change. Um, let's see what Aaron did. I think maybe just the exact same thing in a different form. I think slow. I kind of just of going six minutes too, I'm sorry.
Yeah. Minus three plus. Aaron, you're just doing the same thing. Yes. Because six minus two, if there's a, a point at uh, what, four, six, and one, two, that thing that means six thing. minus two is going to give you this. If you have all the rates of change, you're going to be counting, you know, all of the the y yeah. changes along here. Well, that, all the sum of all of these y changes here yeah. is going to be this, right? Yeah. Then you divide it by three. Oh. It's the same as dividing it by four minus one. Yeah. Which yeah. Um, you did say what I meant. So I was like, he said me, so I was like, okay, fine. Then I'm gonna add them up. Add, add them up. So the average rate of change would be, you take, you see how much did it change in the y direction over how much did it change in the x direction, the average rate of change. But average, if you don't know, what's the average uh, number of miles, which is kind of what we think about it, um, then you would do more like, basically find the area of the curve and then divide by the interval. Sine cubed of alpha means you take the sine of alpha, you cube that. That does help. Mm-hmm. So, like a u substitution problem. What if this were u? What would be du? What would be du if that was the sine? If u was the sine? No, just this. Okay. Not this. Cosine. Just this. Oh yeah. Okay. It's cosine. I heard it already. Cosine oh. alpha d alpha. Oh, that's alpha. Right. So this looks like u cubed du, which is a simple thing to take the antiderivative of, right? Well, what u? u. Um, yeah. So this is one fourth times the sine of alpha to the fourth. If we take the, the derivative of this, we'll get that, we use the chain rule. Okay. We're going to take that from pi over 4 to pi. Pi over 2, put it in there, then put it pi over 4, put it in there, subtract. You can't do the calculator on there. I cannot. I cannot do the calculator. So pi over 2, pi over 2, that'd be like 180 degrees. So no nope. variable. That would be 90 degrees. Oh, yeah, that'd be okay, so. yeah, Or you could have bothered to learn radians in the first place, like I kept telling you guys yeah, to learn radians. Yes, I can't remember. So the sine of pi over 2 is 1. Minus one fourth times the sine of pi over four. This one? Yes. Um, two over two. The fourth. So we got one fourth minus one fourth times. If we take the square root of two to the fourth. Here, let's look at it this way. The square root of two to the fourth is the same as two to the one half to the fourth. Is the same as two to the four halves. Which is two squared. Four. Four. And two to the fourth. 16, Whoa. fours cancel, one fourth minus one over 
16? 2 minus 3 is negative 1. Minus, minus negative plus e, e plus, plus e. e over 2 times 3 minus e. Uh, no, none of these. No, none of them. Absolutely none. We're certain that, like, what if we distributed this 2? Might nope. it look like a thing in the denominator? Or no. no these answers? No, nothing. No 6s? Mm -hmm. No. Minus I one, hope, I hope it proves you wrong. Six minus two. <laughs> uh, you know, we want to, let's see, if, if this was going to look like something on this answer, what? maybe it would look like, let's see if we could cancel something out. But this was already factored. No, there's no common factors here to cancel out. Uh, so, yeah. None of ah. these. Woo! 
Oh. Um, Absolutely. Also, yes. you've already read the answer, Kate. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so confident. <laughs> okay. What's next? I was gonna call, I was gonna say 16. Okay. I need to take, need to take some What are you even here? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's but got nothing written. What's that one talking about? God, I wasn't here. It is a All right, so if. Chocolate covered strawberries. Why? Why? Chocolate covered strawberries? Sorry. Let's focus. Okay. All right, so we're gonna ask a question about this. Is equal to A, which seems to stand for area. So this would be like the area under that curve, right? So it might not hurt to have a visualization of that curve, but we don't have our calculator, so we should be able to figure out what e to the negative x looks like. What would e to the x look like? It's an exponential function, right? It would, yeah, it would go up. But it's e to the negative x, which we just write as 1 over e to the x. What would that look like? It just it would approach. It would be approach. Yeah, it would be flipped. Yeah. It would be exactly flipped over like this horizontally. Okay, so instead of going like this, it would go like this. Okay, so that's good to know. If we need more details about it, well, we'll just have to figure those out. But it's talking about this between zero and one. Yeah, it'll be kind of more like. <laughs> it looked like this. Oh, yeah, it's going to be the negative, yeah. It would be 1 over e to the x. So just think, like, yeah, think where e to the x looks like this, right? That's because e to the first is e, e to the second is e squared. That's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And then on this side, 1 over e, or e to the negative 1, which is 1 over e, is 1 divided by e, which is small. And then 1 divided by e squared, which is smaller, 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 smaller. By putting this in negative, we just switched those relationships. If we put in a positive, we actually get a negative. So we put in a 2, we actually get e to the negative 2, which is 1 over e squared, which is what this is. But now it's over here. Okay, So it flips every x value, becomes the opposite of what it was. So this graph gets perfectly flipped over the y-axis. So, so, so that's the area. And then they talk about using, uh, let's see, Approximate using the Riemann sum and the same number of subintervals and L, R, and T to note the left, uh, right, and trapezoid sums. Uh, then it follows that, okay, so which is bigger and which is smaller? Okay. Uh, well, let's think about what it would look like. Let's use like some fairly chunky subintervals. Notice that this function is always decreasing. Okay. So if I draw a right-handed sum. So that's going to be using the right side of the rectangles. How does that compare to the actual area? Okay, so the area is bigger than, okay, maybe for some reason possibly equal to the right-handed Riemann sum. Okay, and we might have to squeeze something in between those when it's lined out. Let's look at the uh, left-handed sum. So that's using the left side of the rectangles, like this, this, and like this. How does that compare to the right-hand sum? Bigger than, bigger than that. that. Area? Bigger than that. It's bigger than that. That's the left-handed sum. Now we look at the trapezoid. Uh, I need some of the early stand down. How about yellow? Okay, so that's a straight, straight shot uh, at between intervals, that guy. So we've got to be able to kind of visualize what's going on on the curve, okay? So let's zoom in on that curve. Like we can see, the trapezoid's really close, right? Is it bigger or is it smaller? Got a little closer. Got a little closer. It's bigger. Okay. So zoomed in on it. This is zero. This is zero. This is one, let's say. Okay. Notice how it curves. Down it's like a bowl, it's concave up. Mm -hmm. If we look at the trapezoids, the trapezoids like this, 
It's gonna this curves down like this. This one's gonna straight straight from here to there, and this one's straight from here to there with a curve curving below it. Okay? And that's always going to be true because it's concave up. So it's gonna be a wee bit bigger. So the trapezoid is gonna be a wee bit bigger, but not as big as the right. Not as big as the left. Left. So move this one over. Do the R A T L. Yeah, I oh. okay. So there we go. Beautiful! Okay, okay guys, I said it all the R A T L. Right there it says. I know, it's you gotta read the problem. I have a hard time reading that problem. 19. Yeah, team. Oh, yeah, good cue, good cue. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> you gonna fight me over? I mean, I'll probably just punch you in the head. <laughs> so we're looking at that area. This is at zero, four, negative one, zero, and one, zero. If we want the area that is shaded there, you gotta take the square minus what's under. The square? It's a rectangle. It's a rectangle. My bad. bad. Area of the rectangle minus the area under this curve. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Square is eight. Okay. Oh, rectangle is eight. The rectangle has an area of eight because it's two by four. Okay, so the rectangle's area equals four, or sorry, eight, two times four. Oh, yes. Now we need to find the area underneath this curve here. What would be the antiderivative of the... Mm -hmm. So, the it's the antiderivative from negative one to one, one over, four over, one plus x squared. Um, I can figure that out. Uh, Okay. Here's the unfortunate thing. Oh. Um, all the answers are prime. It's all really confusing. So, to be honest, as much as I've fought you guys all here to like really dig in and dedicate yourselves, and on average we haven't, we didn't get time to go over this. But I sacrificed it because this is the only question I've seen in all the at least this year that I've been looking over this test. Okay. So the antiderivative of 1 over 1 plus x squared, so I'll take this 4 outside of the antiderivative. The antiderivative of 1 over 1 plus x squared is ah. the arctangent of x. <laughs> Wait, what? How? So now that that's true, that's our tangent means the inverse tangent, right? Is there any reason why that's true, or is it just like math? You just learn it. That's true. That's uh, math, so you understand. understand. If we had gone over it, we certainly could have discussed it in more detail. You can look in the fronts of your books. There's a bunch of antiderivatives. There's the antiderivative of 1 over 1 plus x squared dx. It probably looks like 1 over 1 plus u squared du, but it's there. Okay, um, it's a common, this is a common antiderivative to give an AP calculus student, 1 over 1 plus x squared. Okay, but it's also common to give inverse sine and inverse cosine, or ones that have the antiderivative of inverse sine and inverse cosine. Um, it's one problem out of all of them. If you're strong on the things that we have spent time learning, it's not really going to affect your score. It's not, this question is not going to make the difference between a 4 and a 5. Um, so, arctangent or the inverse tangent of 1 minus the inverse tangent of negative 1. What's the inverse tangent of 1? That's where you take your sine over your cosine, right? So, at what angle when you take the sine over the cosine do you get 1? 5 over 4. There should only be one angle, because we want this to be a function, right? If we get multiple outputs, it's not a function anymore. So remember how we talked about inverse tangent? It's all from negative oh, pi over yeah. 2, pi over 2. Okay, so it's pi over 4. 4 times pi over 4 minus, what's the inverse tangent of negative 1? Negative pi over 4. Right? It's down to negative. So minus negative pi over 4. And so we get um, 
four times pi over two. Uh, two pi. Yeah, two pi. So. Uh, oh, that's just the area under that curve. Okay. So we subtract it from eight, right? Eight minus two pi. Oh, that's B. In the book, it says u u prime over one plus u squared is yeah. tangent. Give me six. Of you, yes. Yeah, I'm not. It's like because this was just four or four or right. one up here instead. So what? Well, yeah. so yeah. You were never supposed to No, that's. I mean, that's big. Oh, this is like an opening on your project. Oh, there you go. There you go. Get it right. I like that. Where we see that? Uh, and feel free at any time to say we'd like to have the second version and just working as well. We'd like to. I think that's all my Wait, questions. Wait, let's look at the questions. No, I don't know. Yeah. 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 But I'm probably not the best person to ask. Can we go um, with 24? h is the rate of square root of h twice the rate of increase of h. So, okay. so let's say uh, f of x is equal to h, and g of x is equal to square root of h. You have to figure out when g of x equals to f of x. Well, no. It's asking about the rate. So we need to find the derivative, right? G prime and F prime. Okay, so G prime, we're talking about G prime and F prime. And this is a common thing where we say when one thing is twice the other or three times the other or one half the other, we just got to make sure we get this correct, okay? So um, the rate of increase, so what value of H is the rate of increase of square root of H twice the rate of increase of H? So if we take the rate of increase of h, which is this, it needs to be twice as big as this. So we need to say that 2 times this is equal to that. Right? Twice this is equal to this. OK. Well, then we need to get this in terms of h, right? So we need to take f prime and g prime and see what they are. Mm -hmm. okay. So f prime is equal to 1. OK. Uh, so then, well, I guess this would need to be equal to 2. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, G, so this is F prime. G prime is equal to, what is G prime equal to? H and two. First, the square root of H and G. What? <laughs> what is G prime? H to the one half. One half. Yeah. One H to the negative one half. What? Oh, okay. One over H. Yeah, I was like, wow. One over two times the square root of H. Okay, so this needs to be twice as big as that. Well, twice as big as that is conveniently just the number two. Mm -hmm. So two needs to be equal to one. Uh, yeah, one over two times the square root of h. So we solve for h uh, times two times the square root. So h square root of h is equal to one over four. So multiply by the square root of h and divide by two. And then we square both sides. Mm -hmm. H is equal to 116. Uh, okay. Right there. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah, I didn't see the rate, so I was like, oh, okay. Where did I get that from? 116 is the correct answer. 24? That side is correct. Is it? Okay. okay. Twenty-one. 
f prime of x equals 2 f, oh, 2 times f of x. f prime of x is equal to 2 times f of x, and f of 2 is equal to 1. Then f of x is equal to what? <coughs> That's the question. Is that the answer I'm looking for? Okay, so this is a differential equation. It's going to be easier to write f prime as dy dx and to uh, y, right, f of x is y. 21. If we were doing that, then they would give us f of x and f prime, and we would write yeah. this dy dx. And so now we separate the variables. We get dy over y equals 2 dx. What was Um, so we solve for y, right? F of x. So what's the answer derivative of dy over y? L. Oh, my God. Oh, equal. Natural log of y. Yeah. Answer uh, derivative of 2 dx? 2x. 2x, something that if you take the derivative, you get this. Take the derivative of this, you get this. Now we got to solve for y. Oh, yeah, the e thing. Uh, oh, sorry, this should be plus C. Oh, that? C E to the 2x. C E to the oh, 2x. Okay. 2X. Yeah, totally Good. Lot. Very fast, very quick. F of 2 is 1. About this. F of 2 <laughs> is 1. We're solving for C here. F of 2 is 1. C one. equals 1 over E to the 4th. Oh. Wow. So 1 over e to the 4th times e to the 2x equals y. We look at the answers. None of them look like that. Oh, darn. Uh, okay, but what if I so make, write this as e to the negative, negative 4 oh, times oh, e to the 2x. Two x, yeah. So I multiply these together, I add their exponents, e to the 2x minus 4. Uh, equals 1. Hey. Wow. Yeah, I forgot. Yeah, so that when they tell you what f prime is, and they ask for uh, f, and we we're, we're, we gotta take the antiderivative, right? Except for that's kinda hard to be had f of x. So by definition, when an equation involves the derivative and the function, right? The function that it has that derivative, it's called the differential equation. And to solve differential equations, they're gonna give us pretty simple ones. We write f prime is dy dx, f prime is y, or sorry, f of x is y. Uh, and separate the variables and solve for y. Um. You might feel like, oh no, I don't know differential equations, I'm going to do terribly, but we had forgotten about differential equations. Now we've been reminded that differential equations exist. Okay? If you see an equation with an f prime and an f in the same equation, guaranteed it's a differential equation problem to write dy, dx, and y, and solve for y. Take the answer derivative and solve for y. Don't forget plus b. Like I almost did. Yeah, I'd do that. All right. Um, Other questions? Next practice. Right back it. No question. So, packet B, part B? Um, sure. Because B, you failed to distribute that. That's like section part two, part B, or is that section one, part two? I have part B. I have section two, part A. They just have a part B. I have part B. Tiny, what did you have that you gave it all away? Is this 29 well, through 45? Wait, why is my, oh, I think I have it. Yeah, I wanted them as weird. It's staple. It's like right? here and then up yeah. there. Okay, all right, all right. Oh, yeah. I got it. That's Sarah's fault. Not yours? Uh-huh. Oh. Like the story. All right, well, let's get to work, kids. All right, put the table. Can I have one? Oh, how about if I give you the packets? packets. Oh, okay. I have the packets. Yeah. Oh, 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 yeah. Oh,
answers separately because I think it's really helpful when you're getting ready for something to have the answers as you study, but just don't abuse them. Abuse them because it's just not for your best. For your best, in your best interest. Not helping. You should. You should really try something, anything, but by anything I don't mean crazy, false things. Factual, educated guess. Make an educated guess. Follow it through. Because when you make that educated guess, and it even has a glimmer of like being on the right track, and you check the answer, and you see that, oh, I did try. I initially did try the right thing. Or, oh, I kind of had the right idea. It's, it's better than, oh, I completely understand the explanation, but I didn't come up with anything originally on my own. It's not very useful. See what I mean? Yeah. 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 Yep. OK, so I'm going to pass this out. I love your Buckstein picture. Everyone's just trying to be so serious. And Logan's just <laughs> straight Jason. I seen it. So is Jade. Jade's, Jade's just who like. Who are you with this one millimeter thick? Yeah, I know. He'd be worn. <laughs> I was pretty. <laughs> who are you kidding? What was I supposed to do? <laughs> oh, I have answer keys. The whole answer keys. So I don't know if that's anything. Oh, it's like a whole different All right, yeah, everyone. <laughs>